Hello fellow mechanics. In this video I will explain how the integrated processor works and how to use it in great detail. The integrated processor is the latest addition to the programmable processor mod. In comparison to the existing processor there are fundamental changes to increase productivity and ease of use. Before anything else though please keep in mind that the integrated processor is in a beta state at the time of this video and aspects of it might change in the future. The first improvement is user interface. Instead of typing every command on a keyboard built in game you use chat commands. Before you worry about this requiring a game file mod I can assure you that this is not the case. The only thing that is required is the game hook mod. This change also includes writing code. It is not possible anymore to write programs inside scrap mechanic itself but rather import every file from disk. The second improvement is a new programming language called SMPL. In case you have worked with the HLL programming language then you have little to worry about. The new programming language has pretty much the same syntax as HLL with some changes for more flexibility. Some of the new features are classes, operator overloading and error handling. The process of porting old programs to the new system is quite straightforward. The third improvement which is a side effect of the new compiler and interpreter is better runtime performance. This helps to reduce lag when running programs at a high speed or allows more processors to run at the same time. The next two improvements go hand in hand and are related to the module system of the language. It is easier for you to create new modules in Lua and use them in your programs. It is also easier for users to install new modules. After this brief overview let's look at some of the mentioned aspects in more detail. SMPL stands for Scrap Mechanic Programming Language. SMPL is an object-oriented dynamically typed programming language. It features the typical control flow structures like if, else statements, for loops, while loops, try, catch blocks, functions and classes. This tutorial is not intended to serve as a programming tutorial so I will have to refer to other programming tutorials. As already mentioned it is possible to overload operators. To overload one of the operators implement a function with the name corresponding to the operator you want to overload. Here is a list of all existing unary operators that can be overloaded. This is a list of all binary operators. I will link a guide to the integrated processor in the description that contains all the necessary information regarding the names of the corresponding functions. Let's take a look at a simple example. Let's assume that you want to draw the Mandelbrot set. The easiest way to get the required functionality is to create a new class. The class has a constructor that gets the real and imaginary components. Besides that there are two functions called mul and add, which implement the behavior when used with the multiplication and addition operator. The class behaves like immutable values so it returns a new object of the class each time an operation is performed. This class together with some management code is enough to render the Mandelbrot set. Here you can see a 54 times 54 pixel version of the Mandelbrot set with up to 50 iterations per pixel. The processor is running at 20,000 iterations per tick which has the potential to cause lag depending on the system that it is running on. The runtime environment features a number of modules. The modules are split into two categories. The first category are standard modules that are always active. The second category are extension modules. Some extension modules are coming with the processor itself but more can be added by additional mods like the screen module or the camera module. To install additional modules use the global install and uninstall functions and pass in the location of the module. The path should be provided by the mod author. Now let's leave the theoretical aspects behind and jump into a small how to section. Every command starts with a slash followed by the name of the command. After the name you provide the arguments for the command just like the normal scrap mechanic commands. If you want to take a closer look at the following commands to get more information use the info command. In order to control the processor you need to press U on it. The first step to run a program is to import the code from disk. In order to do this execute the import command in the chat. This will add the file from the program json into the current working directory. The program json file is located in the source folder inside the mod files in the workshop folder of Steam. 
To get there go into your Steam library. Open the properties of Scrap Mechanic. Navigate to the Local Files tab. Browse the local files. Click on Steam Apps. Then navigate to Workshop. Content, 387,990, 1,969,702,041. Source and finally open program. JSON in an editor of your choice. As you can see the structure is very straightforward. The name property represents the name the file will have when it's imported. Due to the limitations of chat commands it's highly advised to not use spaces in your file names. The content is a list of strings that represents the lines of the file. If you want to import multiple files at once just put them into a list and execute the import all command. I also highly recommend to keep your files in a separate file and only copy them over when you want to import them to avoid conflicts when a new update is released. Besides that you can create a script that automatically converts the source code into the JSON format and you are able to create syntax highlighting. After importing the file let's take a look at the file system. To ensure that the file is where you expect it to be you can inspect the content of the current directory using the files command. Using the command tree you can take a look at the whole file tree of the computer. To get the path of the current directory use the pwd command. You can create a new file with the mkf command. Using the mkd command you can create a new directory. With erm you can remove a file. With rename you can rename a file. With move you can move a file into a different directory and with copy you can copy a file. With the file on the system we can proceed to compile the program. To do so use the smpl command. Specify the input and output file and execute the command. Now that the file is compiled you can execute the program using the run command. If you want to stop the program use the stop command. To start a program using in-game logic you can bind an id to a program. Use the bind command to do so. Now that you know how the processor works I want to talk about the plans I have going forward with this project. The first thing I have planned is to add file I.O. modules. Other modules I experimented included a music, sound module and an item management module. If these modules will be released remains to be seen. Another important idea I want to realize is a simple editor in Scrap Mechanic. Due to the constraints of the modding API at the moment I can only hope that the introduction of signs will introduce the ability to have working text fields in scrap mechanic UIs. I will also post small tutorials explaining the modules that I have released and post update videos when bigger changes or additions are coming. That is all I have to tell you about the integrated processor. Thank you for watching and when you found this video helpful feel free to leave a like or a sub. If you have any questions that have not been answered in the video let me know in the comments or get in touch with me on a different platform.